Albatross D5 from Edward, Profi Pack Edition in 1 to 48 scale. First impressions time. Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Yes, first impressions video time again. And we are looking at this uh, very nice looking um, albatross. Uh, I love the artwork on here. We've got a couple of dogfights going on. We can see this unfortunate British pilot's just had his tail shot away. There's little bits of material flying off in the background and, and an engine fire going on. It's a really nice bit of artwork uh, that showcases the, the the model that we intend to build here so this is a pro feed pack edition so we get some goodies in it and um, it's 1 to 48 scale so let's have a look around the box uh, the box is nice and shiny which is why I've had to prop it up because the light is reflecting off it um, as we look to the side um, it tells us that we have five marking options, um, that there's one model uh, included and it's made in the Czech Republic. Um, so um, it's a 2022 release. Um, I'm not sure if it's a 2022 tool or not, to be honest. Um, the item number is 8113. Um, the side gives us the same information as the top, pretty much, both sides are the same. And then, important side has our five uh, very distinguished paint options. Now, I, I have seen this recently on a video in a museum. It might have even been Airfix that depicted it, but um, um, yeah, that, that looks quite um, a dark grey, but, but in the museum it was a real deep rich jet black so yeah interesting it might just be the 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 material the printed on but um we've got five very different um looking aircraft there um i've got to say i love the one with the dragon i love the one with the edelweiss i love the one that's showing off some of the uh materials and i love the black and white stripey one so who knows which one I'm going to do come the time. Let's take a look inside at what we get. So removing the box lid, um, we've got a pack with our plastic parts in, which is stuck down. Not a fan of the stuck down bags, but anyway. We have our instruction manual. Um, we have a mask sheet, quite a lot of masks on there. We have photo etch, another masking sheet, and several decal sheets. There's at least one, two, three in there, maybe more, but at least three. No resin parts in this one, but they're giving you lots of other stuff to go with it. Um, let's start with the instructions. Okay, our instructions come in an A4 um, colour stapled booklet. Um, and on the front there, we've got quite a bit of historical uh, information. Um, it is reminding us that we're building a 148 scale kit, but, but these, these sort of um, aircraft are quite tiny, even in 148, to be honest. Um, so there's quite a bit of history there uh, and then as we turn over we get a more familiar um, Edward style instruction booklet. So uh, we've got um, a little um, war, um, health and safety note, then we've got our key of symbols used throughout the instructions, then we have a map of the parts included which appears to be um, two sprues, the etch that we've just seen, a mask that looks like it is for the um, undercarriage and wheels, and then a mask set that looks like it is for the tail. 
so um, for obviously for one or maybe more of the paint options then we have our colors list and they're listing um, GSI guns aqueous and mr. color and then mission model paints so they are giving you a list of colors as well so you can cross-reference with the with the mr. color uh, paints if you like noticeably the mission models colors is incomplete so not sure and that carries on there where we've got some metal colors as well so uh, it looks like a lot of colors but obviously it'll depend on which of the five options you're taking which of these that you actually need um, so we start our construction with um, what looks like um, cockpit bulkhead We've not got numbers here, so it's just a, if you want to number them, you can go through them and do that. I've got to say, I have a tendency to do that because so I will make some build notes and reference them to the steps. So I like to have the step numbers personally. Um, what it is doing is it's telling us what colours we need to be painting things. So wood brown, aluminium. Um, and then we've got that part that we've built up being stuck into a fuselage side, more paint instructions, um, and then that looks very much, it's saying gray and dark iron. It looks very much like a fire extinguisher to me. Um, and then I'm not sure whether that is some form of lever or just part of the framework. Um, I'm wondering if you should have wood in between the um, rays there and maybe a different colour because they're saying dark iron for that and it's being attached in. don't know. We'd have to have a look at the time. Uh, then we're building up um, some switches. Um, again, all in dark iron. And then we have um, what's probably a dial because it's asking us to put a decal on it. There's a decal on there, so a couple of different dials and uh, another switch. So mainly dark iron and grey in the cockpit. As we flip over, we can see that we're adding in the chair, um, and that is um, a red-brown colour, wood-brown bulkhead, and then more grey for the floor and, and various bits and pieces. So quite a bit of wood, as you'd expect in this period. Um, and then I'm guessing that is seat harness. Yeah, seat harness. Just showing you what to paint aluminium. Um, we'll have a look and see if they're pre-painted or not. I suspect they probably are. Um, you can now get um, resin bucket seats or 3D printed bucket seats. Um, that might look better than this because these quite often are, are wicker um, just to save weight Yeah, okay, that all looks good. Then we're carrying on with the cockpit. There's quite a bit of work going on here one way or another um, We've got our flight control stick and mechanisms going in and then we're going to um, our guns. We've got a photo etch cooling jackets for them um, so quite a lot of little fiddly details going on there and then we're building up our um, engine uh, what have we got one two three four five parts there to build up the engine with all sorts of different paint instructions and that gets mounted on a little internal mount that's uh, a wooden board effectively and then put into our um, fuselage hearth. So everything appears to be going into the right hand fuselage. Um, yeah. Then we've got some uh, details going into the left, um, the other half of the fuselage hearth. So more switches and bits and pieces. Then we put the two fuselage halves together at the tail. Um, tail planes and lower wing so that looks fairly straightforward obviously with all these bits and pieces in um, a lot of dry fitting to make sure the fits okay there 
Um, then we've got more photo etch going on, some form of uh, strap and brackets and uh, some small details going on. Um, some form of tread plate. Um, never really tells you what these things are, but it says that they go on, so they go on. Then we are, um, and we've not added the wheels or anything yet, but they are depicting them in the picture. But we do have some little masks there that is asking us to use on some of the detail. So um, I'm guessing once we've painted them, we're masking them. Okay, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think so. I think that's what's happening. Um, and then we've got um, a mask there for the lower wing. Was that for the upper wing? I think that's the upper wing. And wheel masks. So I, I think it's showing you the masks a little early, but anyway. Then as we flip over upper wing and the spars, so how well they fit will be interesting to see. It's always a bit of a hairy moment in my mind. Um, and it is telling us that there's four markings that have this type. So there must be another variation somewhere. Um, we've got more photo etch going on. Um, underneath I think the, the wing there um, before the wings turned over and, and mounted on um, and a bit more photo etch going on the lower wing there which I think is all to do with mounting points for the rigging. Um, then we've got a little bit of pipe work going in um, the uh, wheels going on and then the little skid at the back for the tail and quite a bit more photo etch um, with our mounts for our control, uh, control cables and the like and then as we flip over we've got more photo etch for control cables and a single image rigging plan and the uh, propeller going on Okay, interesting. Um, and then uh, more control mechanisms for uh, for the tail. Um, so grey looks like anything that's a sort of a metal part is going to be grey. And the rigging plan does look a little bit complicated, but when you break it down, it's basically supporting that framework, then supporting that framework, um, and then some form of um, cable going to the base there. And that's pretty much it. Okay, paint schemes now. So um, this first one, which is the one depicted on the box, um, comes from Belgium 1917 um, for a July. And um, yeah, that's quite a nice one. That, the thing I like about it is is all the um, lozenges uh, on the top. Uh, not really true lozenges, but that's what it's called, isn't it? So really colourful. Um, I, I really like it. Um, yeah, I, I, that's probably a leading contender. does at the bottom tell you which colours you need for that, so easy to work out what you need from that big list at the front. Uh, probably worth doing a little bit of research and see if the uh, propellers were solid wood and not um, a sandwich of three or so that needs to be painted in. As we flick over to paint scheme B, that's um, early 18. Is it the same guy? No. Um <laughs> this one is definitely bright, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think possibly a bit too bright for me with the purple, but um, definitely distinctive. <laughs> definitely. Um, this one is perhaps the, the most understated of, of all five. It's black all over, but again, you get the all the lozenges um, and you've got the um, Edelweiss there, which will no doubt be a decal. 
Um, so that's quite a nice looking aircraft as well. That's summer 1917. Then option four, this is another good contender for me. I love the dragon, his tail goes up onto the tail and it's all curly and the like. Um, and you've got fire breathing out of it. Um, but the rest of the um, artwork is a little bit more understated. Um, you don't avoid the purple, so quite what that is, I don't know. Um, so this is France, July 17, this one. Um, but you do get a red spinner, and, and the dragon looks really cool. So I think that's a good option. Um, and then the, our final one, the fifth one, um, is um, early 1918. Um, and... We've got the basic wood, the the, the um, being shown there. Then the metal is painted. We've got a bit of a striper tail, and we've got our lozenges back. So there is a good few options there. I think now if we flick over here, um, rib stripes. So we have some decals there for rib stripes, or is it was it masking that we've got for rib stripes to help with your uh, painting and weathering? Okay, let's have a look at the parts. Right, we get two dark grey sprue for our albatross. Um, and have we got numbers on? I don't obviously see that the they sprue are lettered in any way. So we'll deal with this one first. We've got our two fuselage halves and our wings, which are solid. They don't need gluing together in any way. Uh, engine parts, tail, propeller, and our figure who is pre-shot. So you can see there he's, he's taken quite a heavy wound. Um, got quite a big exit wound at the back there. Or it could just be sink. You know, I'll let you make your mind up which one that is. Um, the guy has got goggles on. Um, so rather than having them on his helmet, he appears to have them on, I think. I've only got my reading glasses on, so when I view it, it might be different, but it looks like he's got them on, um, and he's got his uh, baggy flight clothes on. And then we've got a separate arm there for him so that we can pose him, so that's quite nice. Engine, um, simple. I'm uh, just trying to... Yeah, there is um, cooling fins on there. Um, the engine block is quite simple but the uh, what detail there is is very crisp um, I don't see any overt issues there's no um, flash at all um, I wouldn't even say there was particularly anything noticeable in the way of seam let's have a look at the exhaust no the seam is very light actually so cleanup will be nice and easy. I don't see any sink other than in the figure, obviously. And we've got some um, little marks there which are to do with our, um, our rigging points and things, should we want to do that. Um, the panel lines, I don't know. You see, people, people criticise Airfix for having uh, heavy panel lines, but tell me that they're, that they're not the same, because I think they are. Um, anyway, um, the detail is nice and crisp and uh, looks really, really nice. Um, as does this sort of radiator in the in the wing top there. Our flaps are, are moulded in, so there's nothing you're going to do with that without doing some surgery. But it, that would be possible if you wanted. If we turn it over, detail remains nice. We've got some basic internal detail. Um, but we know that we're mounting quite a bit of stuff in there. Our propeller has a really nice smooth shape. And the sprue gate connections are in this little hub there. There is a little bit of sink there, but the spinner is going to hide that anyway. So, yeah. Um, the rib detail is nice. Yeah, it should build up and look quite lovely, that. Let's have a look at the other one. So we've got all our smaller parts on here. Um, so we've got our bulkheads, 
um, the little spinner which is quite nicely done um, not quite sure what that was but it does have a bit of seam on it that's the first bit we build up I think um, another bulkhead our wheels are moulded tyres and hubs together um, again moulded both sides so there's no assembly needed um, our struts are nicely done quite clear where the wood stops and the metal starts our machine guns actually have moulded in cooling jackets so the photo etch must just add something to it so um, you can anneal the photo etch and wrap it around and glue it on or you could just paint these as they are to be honest um, seems to be a bit more seam on this one you can see there Um, and our seat is pretty basic that pretty basic there is nothing on there now whether that is correct I don't know but I also doubt it um, I reckon there should be something on there uh, a couple of eject pin marks but if we end, mount the engine that side up they're not going to be seen so no issues there a couple of delicate parts there that go in the cockpit but a little bit fiddly but should be easy enough to remove and clean up uh, some switch detail on there that needs picking up with a bit of paint but yeah right let's just um, show you these and flip it over And we'll do the same with the other one because I, I neglected to do that. But there you go. So our first fuse are large rings. That's it for our uh, plastic parts, there are no clear parts at all in the kit uh, and what we have next is our photo etch, so let's have a look at that. Now this appeared to be quite a lot of photo etch um, as we went through the instructions, so we can see here the bits that go um, on the radiator on the wing there, we've got our cooling jackets, we've got pre-coloured um, etch uh, seat harnesses which is nice um, we've got a little board there that replaces well if you if you take the molded in dials off you can put the uh, photo etch dials in and the switches go into there but don't know it depends on your view of that painted on wood effect to be honest um, and then we've got another couple of um, colour painted things as well, not quite sure what they are, I think that went on the wing didn't it, and our strap that went over the nose, yeah quite a bit of photo etch, so we have two sets of die cut paint masks and it's actually easier to show you the paint masks using the the instructions we've already seen the instructions connected to this smaller set the larger set however depends on what you're painting and as we look at this we can see we've got chevrons for the tails there we've got uh, complete blanks for the tails and then we've got a number of cut strips and if we look at the painting instructions it's clear that the tail stripes are for that one which allows you to paint the yellow um, put the mask down remove some of them put the green down and so on and so forth um, it also allows you to mask off um, the the movable part of the tail and the under sections and so on um, and it might even allow you to mask underneath it, but it looks like um, as well so it looks like it covers that and probably because you've got blanks you can mask off the tail on all of these where you need to 
um, but obviously you don't need to on three of them so it'd only really be for these um, what the long strips are for I have no idea there's no reference to them in the instructions um, obviously you might be able to use them for for that but they're all the same length so you're going to have to cut them to length so they will be handy but there is nothing specifically saying use these pet paint masks here so um falls a little bit short for me um which edward quite often do with with their um aftermarket stuff is they're not quite as detailed in their instructions as perhaps they should okay. be we've got our decals now and just to be 100% clear, we do have three sheets of decals. So let's deal with these first, which are stripes. Take the protective layer off so we can see them uh, better. Um, can be a bit hit and miss, I find, Edward decals. These don't feel too chunky, but we have a sort of purpley pink colour and then we have a green colour and these are referenced on the back so if we look here from both sides x6 is those there so there's two of those but if we're doing both sides don't we need four i don't know we'll have to have a look and work it out um Again, it's not, if you put in, I don't know, it looks like you've got plenty of the others, X9s, I mean, look at how many of those you've got, um, and they're doing the, the lower lower wing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, you need 40 of those, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, and we've got 22 so how do you do both sides well then we've got x9s in green so which ones are we using are we using the pink or are we using the green there's one top one bottom it doesn't say on here it doesn't say on there so yet again edward falling short on their instructions frustrating that because i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing here so our next decal sheet is major markings uh, and we've got this lovely dragon, um, the Edelweiss, the Black Star, the Balkan Crosses and various words and numbers, a um, couple of stencils, probably common to most of them those I think. Um, but the paper's sort of slightly stuck to the decal so when you take the decals off, I don't know if you can get that in the light, can you see it's leaving that pattern on there it's almost like they've got in some way damp that worries me hopefully when it's all put down and we put a clear coat on that won't be noticeable um, there's quite a bit of decal film excess decal film on these crosses you can see see if again see if i can get that in the light for you you see the ends there's quite a bit there um, on these two little when you look I think they go on the propeller they've got a huge amount of excess film so you might want to cut them out with a punch same with the there's no way that these little flight instrument dials are going to going to go on um, without you trimming them around so uh, a little punch to punch them out would be helpful um, but a nice set of decals nonetheless. Okay, our final decal sheet um, tackles the um, lozenges for the, the wings and the tail. They're some pretty big, meaty decals. How well they'll go on, I am not sure. Um, I'm not sure I've done decals that big. I must have done, but I don't remember that I have. Um, so yeah, getting those in lined up with the edges. But again, you've got the same problem. They've done the whole of the wing for you, but we've got quite a bit of excessive 
decal film, so you're going to have to cut them out really carefully because all of that film is going to overhang. Now, there's two ways you can do it. You can cut it out before you put them in the water. You can put them on, let them dry, and then go around carefully with a knife. But that has all sorts of risks. There's pros and cons to both approaches. Um, but, yeah, it's not a simple soak and slap them on job. There's a bit of work to get them right. And, again, they've got this horrible texture that makes them look like they're sort of breaking up. Yeah, not keen. So there we have it, the Edward 1 to 48 scale Albatross D5, um, a sort of interim aircraft that uh, ended up being quite successful. Uh, what are my first impressions? Well, I have to say, uh, overall, I think the kit is lovely. The plastic parts are great. It's not overly complex. There's detail where you want detail. Everything's nice and crisp. And with it being Edward, it should build okay. It should go together without uh, any major challenges. Uh, I think the paint schemes are, uh, are absolutely gorgeous. I'm sport for choice. Can't make my mind up on, on what I want to do. Um, so might end up getting a weekend version just so I can put some more decals on. Um, uh, instructions, usual standard for, for Edward. Study them carefully. Um, but they're not difficult to follow. Uh, what is difficult to follow um, is um, the instructions that aren't there, like, like the decal stripes. What am I putting where? Uh, well, I understand the placing of them, I think, but I don't know which colour goes where and stuff. And it, it's little details like that which end up being a bit of a, a needless niggle. But um, and, and, that, and that's the low point of the kit for me. There is some information missing that that would be handy to have and wouldn't cost them anything to say green on the top or green on the bottom whichever way it is so i'll have to do a little bit of research around that um highlight has to be that the marking options um uh, yeah so i this is a lovely little kit um it should be a nice little mini project between uh, more meaty builds um you it will look great if you rig it if you don't rig it it will look equally as great. So, yeah, really nice. I I, I like this. I, I bought it because it spoke to me, and I like the I like the colour schemes. And I haven't got many 148 biplanes. Um, and actually, the ones that ones that I have, um, only one of them is First World War. So, yeah, uh, nice to have something a little bit different. So, I'm looking forward to building this at some point. I hope you're looking forward to seeing it get built and I hope that was interesting if you're thinking about getting it. So there you have it. You take care, enjoy your modelling and I will see you very soon.